<laughs> Shall we begin? Welcome to the Happy Monster Cast. I'm your host, Scott Marchand Davis of Happy Monster Press. Let's begin now. This week on the Happy Monster Cast, someone is out to kill Tinsy Yates before she can reach the roost. Can the misfits stop them? This podcast contains adult language and adult situations. Previously on the Happy Monster Cast, a band of misfits has joined in an effort to break the power of the big boys over the holler, including preacher Piety Jackson, gouger Carl Son of Carl, mountain magician Buck Grayson, bootleg distiller Booker No, and itinerant crooner Old Blue. The rascals have been sent to guide Tinsy Greeny Yates to a refuge high in the mountains, but someone in the woods is hunting her, and the misfits have a fight on their hands. So you are trying to get Tinsy Greeny Yates, notorious bandit and hat of Nishinato, to a safe house up in the mountains. And you've been traveling for a couple days now. You've had a run in with company guards. They apparently destroyed your first safe house. So you get the second safe house, which is a religious camp. And they apparently drugged you and left you out for a demon. So this demon, which appears to be an old, naked, witch-looking lady, has engaged you, and fortunately you've been able to mess it up pretty bad, but it is still standing, and so are all of you at this point, which means you're going to need to figure out how to deal with this critter before you decide what to do about this religious camp. And we're going to start off with Old Blue. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and try and charm the old demon to fall in love with me. Okay. Uh, obviously. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Uh, that would probably be persuasion. Yes, it would. All right. Let's let's do a persuasion roll. I said. I'm just going to say, wow. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh. Uh. Oh, so good. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so she looks over at you and cackles, you're a cutie. I'll eat you last. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, at least I'll be last. Thank God. <laughs> uh, next up is Carl, oh, wow. who's in melee with this demon. Hey, folks. Hey, Brennan. Maybe we did lose Frank. I'm going to go out. But there we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I did You're going to be punching. Massive punch. That is not remotely sufficient to hit her. Ah, uh, what the heck? Where is... That, on the other hand, <laughs> will hit with a raise. Well, that's good. It was my last Benny. Oh, I gotta do this, don't I? Ah! And that is going to... Take her down. Sorry, Blue. All right. So let me. Uh... You know what they say? Love is fleeting. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Turn off all of these. All right. So you now have a bit. You have a decision to make. 
about whether you are going to, what are you going to do about this, this enemy camp? They did leave you your things bundled up, possibly some sort of sacrificial thing to the demon. So you haven't lost any gear. But obviously, you know, these people drugged you and left you for dead. So not great. <laughs> no, not great. <laughs> uh, where are all of them? Well, as a religious man, I would say revenge is not cool. They're some distance away through the woods. Uh, there are I quite say a few. Find them. There are quite a few of them. Based on what you saw earlier, when you were, they were welcoming you and feeding you, which was probably drugged. Mm-hmm. It looks like there are more than a dozen of them in this camp. Uh, do we see where our stuff is? Yeah, you grabbed it when you when you uh, broke out of your your bonds, or when others of you broke each other out of your bonds. You're no longer tied up. They basically left your stuff piled up around a tree, and you've collected it. Aren't we at all curious as to why they did this? I mean, piety. This is your this is your crew. Why would they do that to us? I, I, I well, would just leave him. This is an age of apostasy. I <laughs> would allow a folklore or a cult role to, to try to understand what might have happened there, which I will give you a plus one bonus to since they are your people. Scott, maybe you could do... I'm having a hard time logging in. Uh, uh, Foundry is not loading for me for some reason. Oh, okay. No problem. I'll go with the call. I'm going to try uh, logging in again. Yeah, that's the stronger one, I think. With the plus one, you think that perhaps this demon was responsible, that it corrupted them and swayed them into its service. So if, oh, well, if we destroy the demon, will they no longer be in their service, or...? Uh, it's possible. It's also possible that they would want By revenge. the power of Jesus, we cast the demon out. <laughs> I mean, you could drag the corpse in and see what happens. Do it. <laughs> Nonsense. Yeah, let's do it. Throw the head into the middle of town and say, anybody else have opinions? <laughs> So you, you make your way back into the thing, and you see the, the leader, a guy by the name of Ambrose Swink that you met last time, and you do just that. You throw, you know, you're bristling with weapons, you throw the head down <laughs> in front of you, and I would like, let's see, who's actually throwing the head down? Oh, I was kind of kidding about that. No, I think you should do it. Uh, and I would like you to make an intimidation roll, please. No, I'll but I would do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I want somebody to do it, but I'm kind of creeped out by the whole idea. Not a stellar roll, but let's see what happens. Yeah. He sort of looks at the head, and he looks at you. And a look of fear comes over his eyes. What manner of creatures are you? Get in. He's still under their power. Or he's still under the power of this whatever. <laughs> yeah. Who, who's this guy? He's the leader of this encampment of the anointed. I'm going to cast blindness. Go! We're the guys who kicked your demon's ass. You don't deserve to see! Bam! All right, give me a cast it. <laughs> wow. Uh, I think you wanted to blind rather than havoc. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. Right, right, whatever. So I'm going to let you not have critically failed that role. 
Aw. Uh, that will not I'm go off. Benny that. Yeah. All right, that does go off. He's, and he says, I'm blind! I'm blind! What have you done? And goes running off into the village screaming. What would you like to do now? Okay, was that productive? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Goes on. So proceed. Or are you going to go running through the camp, setting it on fire? What's what's the what's the plan here? I well, we should we certainly should search the camp. Well, I'll vote it again. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, do we have time to search the camp for any uh, other evidence of any other foul uh, influences, or do we need to do that? You you certainly can. As you run around, they're running around like crazy. They seem terrified. Find evidence that they've they've probably plundered a few more travelers. Okay. They also seem to be scattering into the woods. All right, but but there's like there's no physical manifestations of demonic possession, right? I mean, no voodoo dolls or oh, there's a what, what's the the term for that? Nope, nothing like that. Nothing like that. Okay. All right, so what's next? Move on? Yeah, I think move on. All right, so it's nightfall, so you can proceed on your course. You head on further into the woods. And as you're climbing a steep hill headed for the, the wilderness, towards the mountains, there's a whistle and a thunk and a shout from Tinsey. She has been hit with an arrow. Ooh. What? Punched into her left side. Kind of seemed to come out of nowhere and, and hit her. And she says, get this thing out of me. So. All right. Let's take a look at her and see what's up. What's What's in her? Does anyone have conventional healing skill? Yes, at least one of you does. Piety does. I think I do. Yeah, go ahead yeah, and make, make a, uh, a straight I healing do. roll first. Can I make a notice roll to see if I can see where it came from? Yes. Although it's going to be at a severe penalty. I'm going to do the same. That's not a great roll. Ooh, you might want to Benny that healing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I'm going to Benny that. How many do I have? Yeah, okay, I will I will Benny the All right, Booker, okay, good. That's pretty impressive. You get her patched up pretty good. That's going to take care of both her wounds. And she examines the arrow as you're looking around. And you see in the distance, Booker... You you think you see might see something up in the trees, but it's it's dark and hard to see. And Tinsey looks at at the arrow and says, "Roland Lusk might have known." Is that a person's name? Who? A what? Roland Lusk. Yeah, he's a notorious stalker. Figure the big boys must have hired him to track me down. I, he's been, I took, I stole a few jobs out from under him. He's not my biggest fan. If I unloaded a wow. shotgun up in the tree, do I think I'll hit anything? 
unlikely because this was fired from range. So it's not mm -hmm. like it's in a nearby tree. It's out. It's on another on another hill adjacent to the one you're on. You could, however, attempt to track That's the quite shot. You I'm could, sorry. If you could, however, attempt to track the guy down. That would be a survival roll. What do you think, Tinsy? Should we go after him? I don't want you to hurt him, but I figure if you don't, he may well take and find another site and take another shot at me. How far are we? How far are we from delivering her to safety? Got another night's travel to the last safe house, then you have to climb the mountain. Do you want to try tracking Man. down? I don't have tracking. Anybody have tracking? Buck does. He's your survival expert. But he is not able to find him without bennying. Do you want to want to spend one of his bennies to try again? <laughs> How many does sure. he have? Yeah. Buck currently has three. So oh, we'll do one. It. Yeah. yeah. All right. So Buck had nice. a little trouble in the darkness at first, but then he catches a trail and motions you to quietly follow him. And as you quickly move through the mountains, you approach a stream and you see. Lusk across the way, running away from you. Let's get. Can him. I cast mind reading and see where he might be going? Let's see, you might be out of range for mind reading. Mm. I'm gonna move him a little bit closer. I don't want him to be quite that far away. But yeah, I think you're still out of range. Well, I'm not sure. Let me double check the range. Mind reading. Yeah, it's range smart, so you're not quite in range for mind reading right now. Nah. And as okay. he as one of as he hears you rustling through the brush, he turns and draws his bow, and that's gonna put us into combat. Okay. Tensi dropped back because she knows he's she's his primary target. I'm hiding behind a tree. And Buck's up first. So seeing him pull up the Uh everything's black for me. Oh. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I was about to say. All right. Let me fix that. Ah, and there we are. Oh, okay. Okay, so Buck is going to advance. Into the stream here, which slows him down a little bit, but gets him into closer range. And since Tinsy specifically asked you guys not to hurt this guy, rather than his usual, rather than his more potent firearms, he pulls out his sling. Huh. So it is dim. And he's at range. So that's not remotely going to hit. Hmm. All right, Roland, seeing a, another tracker like him, is not going to hesitate and takes a shot with his bow at Buck, but misses because of the darkness. Carl!
What's your play? So with us, Frank. Can you not hear me again? I can hear you oh, now. If we can hear you now. Yeah. What, what is the worst thing in the world? What would you okay. do? So is Buck the only person that can see him? No, you can all see the guy. Okay. Um So the, the the green stuff down here. Is that just deep water? That's like, uh, lighted water. Lighted water. Even better. Okay. I think I'm going to start. How far can I get this way? Well, depends. Are you going to run? You, you can get one square further without running. And potentially quite a bit further if you run. How far can I get if I run? You have to make a run die roll and see. Ah, okay. Uh, Click on the uh, pace on your character sheet, or roll a d6, whichever. So that'll take you. That'll take you a few more squares. You can get right up to the lighted water. So we're going to go there. All right. Any actions? They will be a minus two because you ran. Not much I can do right now, so. No. All right. Piety. Okay. I'm going to close just to the edge of the stream, and is Roland now in range for me to cast Confusion on him? Let me check the range of Confusion. Let's find out. Not, uh, let's see, what is your smart, smart six? No, he is not in range yet. Okay. However, there may be a power modifier to fix that. Yes, there is. So you can spend an extra power point, and then he is in range. Okay, I will I will do that. And one PowerPoint on that. All right, I'm going to expend one PowerPoint on that. All right. All right. That will confuse him. Cool. Hopefully that'll slow him down. And So he's got to make a smart scroll to see if he can resist it. Which he does not. Nice. So he is now distracted and vulnerable. It's almost as good as throwing a rock at somebody's knee. Booker. So is there a way for me to get closer and still be hidden away, because I certainly don't want to be exposed. Like, Best is bet this would be to hide in that shrub, yeah. Okay. And so you, I'm you gonna... could do mind reading, but again, you have, same thing, you'd have to spend the extra power point to double the range. Um, I don't know if I've got... How many... I don't... I've only got one left, right? One power point? No, you got 12. Oh, well then blow it. Okay. What is he up to? Oh, wow, that's not going to work. No. Worth bennying? Yeah, what the heck.
well, he's got a chance to resist that. Okay. But he's already distracted and confused, that poor man. And nevertheless, he manages to resist. Ah. Uh. Wow. What a guy. All right. And that takes us to Old Blue. Uh, Ron, you have self-muted, by the way. Oh, how's that? Better? Yes. All right, I'm going to move, and then I'm going to try to convince him to lay down his arms and uh, give up. All right. All right, let me do persuasion. Yep. Uh, persuasion. Uh, seven. Happy with that? Um, yeah, I, th I think we can we can leave it at a seven. We'll see what happens. All right, with a two, he says, "I got no quarrel with y'all, but I got a job to do." Well, 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 come on now. Just, just, just go ahead and just lay down them arms. Give on up. Uh, that by itself <laughs> is not yet enough. Although you get the impression that if you walked away, he would definitely let you. Mm, if he's tenacious. And we got another day and change of travel. I say we'd be a little more convincing that he not have a job to do. Yeah. All right. So he is going to try to intimidate Buck and say, he says, I got no quarrel with you, but I'll put you down if I have to. Not terribly intimidating, though. And then he takes cover behind a tree. Let's see if Buck critically fails on his attempt okay, that's to resist less the intimidation. Doesn't critically fail. Oh, Blue. <laughs> come on now, there's a lot more of us than there is of you. Just watch, come on out. Come on over. No, nothing's going to happen to you. <laughs> so you're lying, is what you're saying by rolling performance. Oh, whoops. I, I meant persuasion. I'm sorry. <laughs> wrong, wrong one. <laughs> Another seven. All right. I guess, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at seven. He's no longer distracted, so he's got a better chance of resisting that. Man, he said that. He says, five to one ain't exactly fair odds. Exactly. What, what guarantee do I have that uh, you're not just going to put a bullet or an arrow through me if I come out? Now, we ain't that type of people, and you can trust me. I promise. My friends here won't well, hurt. We don't have a quarrel with you either, but we also have a job to do. Yeah, what's your job? What's yours? Well... My job's uh, to take down that Tinsy. She tried to kill me once. And so I didn't have much trouble taking the job. Well, and, and why would she try to kill you? Well, she used to be part of my gang. I raised her as a thief. And she double-crossed us. Well, I I'm sure that's all in the past now. Just let bygones be bygones now. <laughs> what 
<laughs> Give me another for Clayton. <laughs> I think you're doing great. Um, Excellent. Hmm. Six is good, but it, I mean, do, what do you guys think? Should I re-roll? Have a better chance of getting a better uh, roll? Always a chance of critically failing, too. That's true. Uh, I feel like... Can I, I, feel uh, like re- can I read his mind and uh, mm-hmm. see if... See if he's buying any of this? Let's see if he can uh, fight that off. Not even, just... not even close. So, man, he seems <laughs> extremely determined to fulfill his contract, but he is listening and he's hesitating a little bit because he's not sure he can take all of you. Can I double down and add to the persuasion? Yeah. All right. He's wavering, guys. Whoa. Oh, oh that's good. <laughs> what's your, I think what's you your can argument? trust Whoa. this man. How persuasive. Is he buying it? Tell you in a second. I guess, I guess we'll see you in a sec. Damn. Wow. He's tough. He is. Oh, my God. Says, I tell you what. You all walk away, and I'll walk away. And we'll call it a night. Well, I mean, as long as no more violence is happening, I, th- I think that's a good idea. We'll both just walk away. You go your separate way, we'll go our separate way. He's going to come back after us. I, I, I want your word that you're not going to come back after us. Now. In fact, for your mind reading, his plan is to take out Tinsy later in their journey. Well, see, now that's He's just wrong. definitely going to come after Tinsy again. Like I said, I want, I want your word you're not going to come back after us. I won't touch any of you. That's kind of loose. Like, our job is to get Tinsy safely. How, how many away. more days do we need? How many more days? So you're going to rest in the daytime, and then you've got the climb up to the up to the hideout. But I said, take him out. We know where Booker, he is. Per your magic moonshine, you are confident that he's telling the truth that he wouldn't. He's not going to hurt any of the five of you. But he is absolutely going to try to take another shot at Tinsy later. Well, how many more? Days do we need to get uh, till we get or to the place that she needs to get to? The rest of the nights travel tonight, rest for a day, and then another night's climb. I say we tie him up real good. Listen, I, I want your word that, that we really won't like see it. you in the next three days. You won't see me because, okay, <sighs> mind reading, he, uh, he, because he'll be in He's going to be in hiding. He'll, he's going to snipe. Yeah. I, I want you where they're going to give us all safe, all of us safe passage for the next three days. You got yourself a deal. All of you have safe passage, but not Tinsy. <laughs> God dang. <laughs> Listen, what? Revenge. Let up. Revenge ain't. We got to take way. him. The, uh, revenge is not the way. What is it going to bring you if you try to kill me? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. I'm about to hit you upside the head. <laughs> I, I got. I got this. I got it, this. It's gonna. I was hired to do a job. It's gonna bring me a payday, just like you all. Wait. Well. What? How, how much are the these people paying you? Five hundred and company script, and my pick of two different junkyards. Two junkyards. Whew. Well, I, I know that's that's pretty good rewards. I have to say, but 
is it worth it? Is it really worth your life? I mean, look at it. Okay, I'm going to start like moving out and getting closer and see if I can cast Havoc or something. I'm going to move. I'm okay, so you're close. So you're closing. Listen to this nonsense. And I'm going to recommence combat turns at this point. So, piety. Oh, God. So. I feel we're in an impasse. You see Booker closing in, and, and Booker's been whispering to you that this guy's not being straight with you. Right. I agree. I agree. I agree. Trying to let me. But she did. Th- she did ask you not to kill him. Right. Yeah, but um, if he ain't the boss of us. Hang on a second. <laughs> Just saying. Can I uh, can I just interject again while yeah, people are trying yeah. to move and do things? Listen, your old friend here, she told us not to kill you. Obviously, obviously, she still cares for you. Well, I didn't raise her right. Now, now, come on, you raised her right, all right? This she oh, should know don't I have to show mercy like that. Hey, Heidi. Now. Now search. I am gonna. Heart in your heart. All right, I am gonna try. Per, I'm gonna try persuasion again. I mean, my um, my pacifist endurance is such that I can't like attack this guy. Well, you so have gonna, tried persuasion, so I'm gonna move it on to Carl. Well, that's true. That's true. I I doubled down. I helped. All right, dang it. All right, Carl. It's remotely possible you could get into melee range if you ran full tilt. But you'd have to get lucky on your run die. Because waiting through the stream is a bit harder. And you're exposed, right? That's yeah. a tough one. It is. You'd need a three or better on a run die, but you'd be up in his business. <laughs> you can Benny that if you have any bennies that you don't. So you you run across the river towards this guy, and that will get you right here. So he clearly knows you're coming. <laughs> Booker. Uh yeah. Uh if you're if you're closing oh, the range, man. you can get to about here, which is definitely in within range for havocing. All right. Oi. Off I go. Or wherever you had me. Yeah, uh, you can get a little closer than that. Yeah, this way you're definitely out. Carl's out of the line of havoc. And yeah. blast away. What? Is that a seven or a one? Oh, I'm gonna. Wow. See, did I blow my last Benny? Nope, I don't think so. Oh well, wait, I gotta refresh that. Yes, you're out of Bennies, so Oy. your havoc doesn't go off. Buck is also gonna move in to avoid any long range penalties, but this time he's gonna do a called shot with a deer rifle. To oh man! The guy's arm, because again, he's still trying not to kill him. Okay. Arm, not the knees or thighs, so he can't Actually, run. He's not carrying the shot, the rifle, is he? Oh, now he's so he's he's going to do the cold shot with a sling. Dim light, it's going to be a long shot. Nope, that'll miss. Initiative is going to be very important this round. I'll remind those of you who have bennies, which is all of you now because Piety just threw a drucker, that you can Yay. use bennies to draw a different card, 
which might be important because Roland is going first out of all of you. <laughs> Anybody, what are you doing with the Joker? Uh, other than piety, Roland's going first. Anybody want to spend a penny to get a new card? Sure. Uh, spend Benny. Anybody else? Nah, I got a jack. I'm good. You're actually worse. Uh, oh, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep the clubs. All right. So, Piety, you're the only person who gets to go before Roland. What would you like to do? So, he has attacked us, right? He has not yet attacked you, but he is clearly drawing a bead on. He's try. It looks like he's trying to decide who to shoot. He's he's got well, his, his bow up, and he's clearly lining up a shot. Anyway, All right, but, he, but, but that first arrow, that first arrow that he shot, that constitutes an attack on us. Yes, it does. Okay, so because my my um, pacifist, yeah, he, my this pacifist is, he, he is clearly I, 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 he is clearly threatening you. Okay. Well, in that case, I am going to shoot him. Not that much not, of a pacifist. Well, it means that I, I'm not going to just like attack him. Like, I'm, not like, yeah. I'm not going to start the fight. Doesn't That's mean, right. I can't end, uh, can't yeah. end, but but I'm you got to defend it. yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. So, All right. So Give me a shooting have, roll. All right. I've closed range here with the, this will be the peasant. There you go, buddy. Oh, even right. with the darkness uh, and your general ineptitude, that hits with a raise. Excellent. Ooh. So here it goes. There's the raise. So much for not killing him. Well, so I'd say whopping oof. 18 damage. Well, which is going to shake him and do three wounds. Accidentally. Which Oops. is absolutely going to try to soak. Okay, but it might not kill him. Well, it's three wounds. It won't kill him. <sighs> I soaked one. I'm going to give it that another try. Hope I get lucky. <laughs> so two. Yep, so he takes two. Oh. And he's shaking. <clears throat> All right. So now, so tackle him. Now might be a good time <sighs> to tackle him. And then he unshakes. And since you shot him, he, that makes his decision about who you shoot much, much cleaner, clearer. So he raises his bow <laughs> and fires it at you. It is still dark, though, so he does have a penalty, and he's wounded. And that is not going to cut it. The arrow flies off into the woods. Booker. Huh. I am so, going to try... Wow. Uh -huh. You know what? I'm going to pop him one. All right, factoring in your lack of skill in the darkness, that misses completely. Aw. All right, Buck is going to try to move in and try to grapple him. They'll try not to kill him. Ooh, pretty good roll in the grappling, too. But Roland is an accomplished wrestler. Not accomplished enough to overcome his wounds, however, so he is now entangled. Oh, Blue. Well, I, I think you should give up now. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's in I your best remember. interest to lay those weapons down now. Happy with seven? Yeah, we'll, we'll start with seven. <laughs> he says, well, man, I reckon maybe you're right. And uh, drops his bow and ceases resistance. So what are you going to do with this guy? Well, 
I guess we should ask our uh, companion first what uh, she thinks what we should do. She wanted him alive. Yeah, well, well, you raised me. I don't know. He I'm seems not... to be pretty adamant about getting her killed. Well, you raised me, and I'm grateful for that, but can't really trust him. I say we uh, keep him sure. tied up and bring him along, and maybe they can, uh, wherever our last stop bring is, him along. wherever our last stop is, maybe they can uh, keep him prisoner for us or something. Figure out something to do anyway. All right, well, let's just uh, string him along for now. You don't now. want to just tie him up and leave him under a rock? I told you I didn't want him dead. And I figure. I know, but it seems like about. a lot of trouble to bring him around. I I'm sure it'll be pretty easy for him to escape. <laughs> I figure in these woods, yeah, with the if demons he does, around, he knows up, exactly he where we are. With the in these woods with them demons around, I figure it's a death sentence to leave him tied up out here. Yeah, well, we don't want him well, dead. Take him along. He's already, you already wounded softies. him pretty bad. You're, uh, yeah, you're not going to give them any more trouble, are you, Roland? I reckon not, Tinsy. I don't want, they messed me up pretty bad already. I'm going to read that boy's mind. He's biding his time. But he's not going to do anything in the near term. He know, he knows he's outmatched now. Well, while we have you, uh, let me ask you: Do you, do you, do you know who else may have taken on this job? Do you have any friends out here in these woods? Near as I can tell, I'm the only one. Can I make a notice to see if he's telling the truth? Yeah. You think he is? Okay. Well, that's good. All right. So you proceed, and uh, as as daylight starts to dawn, you reach the cave that you've been directed to on the map, and an old man wearing a quilt comes out. Well, if it ain't Tinsy Yates and Rowan Lusk, too. Never thought I'd see you two in the same place before. Welcome, friends. Why don't you come on in and take some rest? Should we, uh, should we give him uh, medical attention for now? <laughs> or at least a little bit? Yeah. Well, it's past the golden hour, so there's really nothing you can do. Okay. So he says... I'll see what I can do about patching rolling up here if you wish, but it's going to take a while. And as you enter, his, his cave is full of herbs, poultices, medical gear, selling materials, clothing, and quilts. And he reaches up on a shelf and hands Tinsy a green fedora with a big white eagle feather in the brim. She says, hot damn! And immediately pops it on her head. Huh. Just, all just for that, that I ain't gonna throw that preacher man down the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> I like her better every day. Nice. Can I uh, can I talk to Rollo and find out like what his story is? He says he's not interested in talking, but Theron says, "Well, I can figure. I can fill in that story for you." Uh, Tinsy curls up in the corner and goes to sleep. And Theron, the Saren Plinth is in my name. And it's my sworn duty to care for that lot up at the roost and help them become what they are not. So Tinsy here, she's the child of textile workers over in Saxon. She was the eighth child in the family, and her father figured they couldn't afford to keep her. So he put her in an apple gathering basket and set her loose on a quick bend of the Wild Eddy River in the Ghost Ridge. He figured she'd float on down to Fayfall and the fairies would take care of her. Weren't pixies that found her, though. Right. Roland here and his gang of brigands. He raised her up in the finest traditions of thieves and scalawags. 
but uh, she didn't. She seemed to have a different sense. She wanted to choose people who are better off than they deserve to be, and give her spoils among those who ain't even got the piss, let alone the pot. She and Rowan really didn't see eye to eye on that. And then when Rowan heard a rumor that a farmer up in the Hogback Hills was a former shopkeeper of a company store and laid away a pile of metal scripts and coins from the city, she wouldn't participate in the raid. Then it turned out the rumor was false. Rowan was rat pissed, burned the village, and killed some of the folk there. That night, Kinsey'd had enough. She tried to cut his throat in his sleep, but he managed to fight her off and nearly killed her. She fled out in the forest, and ever since, she's been on her own, doing her own good kind of bad deeds. Here, you're going to need these when you head up the mountain. And he hands you out some heavy uh, woolen coats and blankets. There you go. Uh, what about, uh, what about Roland? <laughs> Did he, does he still have a gang? So I heard, yeah, he's still out. He's still out. Rousing about, but last I heard, his gang were a long way from here. Oh, that's good. Sounds like a dirt bag to me. Rowan grunts. What a jerk. And then curls up and also goes to sleep. Y'all best rest. It's a tough way. It's a tough climb up to the roost tomorrow. And uh, that is where we will leave it for night. All right. All right. Well, it took a little Thank bit you. of persuading, a little bit of shooting, but we got it done. <laughs> <laughs> it's my sworn job as a bard not oh, to shoot boy. anybody. <laughs> All right. All right. Have a good one, everybody. You can follow Happy Monster Press on Facebook as Happy Monster Press, at our website, happymonsterpress.com, Twitter as Happy Monster PRS, or follow the podcast on YouTube, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, iTunes, or Google Play Music. Savage Worlds is the property of Pinnacle Entertainment Group. All other content is the intellectual property of Happy Monster Press. Music, Ice Cold by Jason Shaw. Oh, Shaw. Sure. <laughs>